Hello everybody and welcome back to another short video about Kerbal Space Program and today I want to share something that I discovered that I don't see a lot of people talking about and this is an inborn feature in both stock and modded KSP that can be found and is an incredible helpful resource so stick around I guarantee that both new and veteran players are going to learn something today uh, on our topic the KSPedia. When I first came across it, I was blown away by how useful it is and how long I've played without it. So if you go down here to the toolbar, uh, on the right hand side before the modded items, you'll find this book icon that opens up the KSpedia, a place to find information about playing and succeeding about Kerbal Space Program. So now, we're first, well, let's move this button real fast, get that out of the way. So now, this is partly kind of like tutorial, this is oftentimes typically just for, you know, new players to teach them the basics about playing uh, Kerbal Space Program and the interface and what all those mean. Uh, so we're going to start here, and as you see here, that's, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Like It shows the toolbars, it shows the different windows and the information and all that. Uh, so some of the veteran players are going to see this, but like, yeah, I don't, I don't need to learn any of that. However, there's certain things here, like this activate additional action groups. Uh, that happened the first time I played, I had additional action groups, and then never again, and I couldn't figure it out for the life of me. And after like a year or so of not playing with it, I had to Google the answer. Here's a page about Delta V tools in the VAB and the space plane hangar. Uh, I never really got a handle on this, but it's useful to see that I could potentially learn how to read it. And the engineer report, also uh, a little complicated, but can easily be deciphered uh, using this page. And moving on to the next category, we have the flight interface, and once again, just pretty typical stuff, but good to explain for new players if you don't know. The maneuver node, this I've never used, I've just relied on mods, um, and so if I were to want to try to play a stock Kerbal, I would have to probably study up on that. Here's the thing about staging, a common uh, mistake with new players. Here's uh, the maneuver tool, another thing I don't have any experience with because I've just fallen back on mods and everything, but... Uh, it is nice to know that it is here, and I could potentially learn it. Uh, EDA construction mode. This one's a little complicated, and I always end up uh, stumbling around just trying to press all the different buttons and never really sure, so uh, good to know. Here's just some general game controls. Uh, once again, probably veteran players will look at this and be like, I don't necessarily need it. Uh, but it is good to refresh yourself on what you know certain things mean, like yaw, roll, and pitch. It shows you the directions and if you're not familiar with those terms this is a great place to figure out like you know because flying planes is hard but with a little bit of knowledge and a little bit of training it becomes a bit easier here's some, uh, some rcs flight controls uh these will not change if you change your key bindings they will not update here to reflect it so just keep that in mind uh you know map interface orbit nodes this is good if you're not familiar with the definitions of uh, orbital mechanics, it'll show you like the apoapsis, the periapsis, ascending nodes, uh, things like that to kind of give you the information of uh, what you're looking at there. And then uh, we come down here and it's the burn time indicator, it tells you exactly what the best way to do a burn is and it shows uh, here at the bottom that it's displayed with the extended burn indicator when settings are enabled. I do wish that it would tell you which setting to change or where to go, but unfortunately it doesn't. Here's some career management stuff, just explaining about the Kerbal Space Program, the astronaut complex, all the different windows you can go to and, and how to go. Uh, once again, kind of some beginner stuff, like if this is your first time or you're new to Kerbal Space Program and you have some questions about how something works, that's a good place to check it out. Uh, here's a cool little, little look at our solar system, just a little bit of information about uh, each planet and shows the moons that they have. I wish they had, you could detail and go and get information about the Mun and information about min -miss. But uh, unfortunately now it's just kind of a general overview of things. Uh, not Nothing too helpful, but kind of kind of fun nonetheless. And uh, I always forget the, the names of the moons of Jewel, so this will, it's good to refresh there. Uh, moving down, uh, you know, shows that uh, there are Easter eggs here. Just Nothing really, not a lot of information there, just the fact that they're, they're out there and you can find them. Um, some orbital definitions, now we're getting into some more technical stuff, uh, it's pretty good to see. And, and I'm skipping through a lot of this, there's, there's so many pages that I'm not even clicking on because uh, we can't, if I were to just go through every single page of the KSPedia, this would be such a long video, but um, 
I'm just showing you some of the stuff that's available, and then as we go down the list, things become uh, a little more advanced, and uh, you can end up learning some things. Oh, here is great. For new players, this is exactly how to get to orbit. If you are struggling to get to orbit, just read these. Uh, read this little section here, and I'll show you. As you see, uh, you know it tells about the atmosphere. You're fighting atmospheric forces. You're gonna have to uh, work with drag. Here's your first mistake going straight up. Um, that's not the most efficient, but you know, that is how most new players play. That's how I played. For the longest time, I just went straight up, burned sideways. And, and I knew that gravity turns were better, but I'm just like, I don't know, this is how I, this is how I can do it. But once you start, learn to get better at gravity turns, things become a lot be uh, easier and more efficient and more successful. So. Being able to practice that is important, and the game does come with tutorials. But the you know I haven't played any of the tutorials, but from what I'm from what I've heard is that they're pretty buggy and not uh, the best at explaining. That typically most people recommend just going online. Oh, see here's a home and transfer how to uh, get to another celestial body and uh, other than Kerbin. And yeah, so uh, you learn a lot from tutorials instead, uh, or uh, from videos instead of the in-game tutorials. But something like this, if you can just, if you're the kind of person who can read something um, and kind of absorb it that way, then this is going to be an excellent resource for you. Uh, here's some basics of rocketry, things like thrust, drag, uh, weight. The, the forces that act on any given object. You know, if you're not, if you're you're not well versed in, in you know a lot of the physics and stuff. Like you, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to play this game. Like there are some realistic orbital mechanics, realistic aerodynamics, and things like that. But uh, it is still accessible to to people who can who want to just wing it. You know, uh, here's uh, different types of engines in case uh, weren't familiar about the different options you have. Uh, that shows a little bit about space stations. Uh, I didn't click into that. That would have actually been cooler to click into and see uh, what they recommended for space stations. But here's a little overlook at the uh, communications network, which is uh, can be a little complicated at times. So it's uh, good to check it out and refresh your uh, refresh your knowledge on this. This is a, a diagram about how signal strength goes and what kind of gains you'll get based on what kind of communications network you have set up. Um, shows you a little bit about relays and why it's good to have uh, things like that. The fact that you won't get signal on the dark side of any given object. Uh, let's see. Keep going down here. Uh, strategies. This is just uh, this is just kind of uh, how to apply the strategies in the administration program. That whole section is just all about like different tactics for career mode and things like that and how to uh, get ahead in uh, the actual base game itself. Uh, here's a little section about resources. The fact that uh, in game you can actually scan the planet, get some information, uh, get some map uh, data for that. This kind of just shows you how, uh, how you want to do it. This is a little thing on the fact that you can get ore from asteroids. So, so as you get further down, things get a little more complicated. And like these are these are mission ideas right there. You know, if you if you never thought about the idea of rendezvousing with an asteroid, landing on it, drilling it for for resources, and then bringing back home, like this is telling you, hey, that's possible. You could you do it. Here's how you do it. Now, moving on to this last section, uh, at the bottom, here's where your mods are. Not all, every mod has it, but. Uh, Several of the mods decided to include KSPedia uh, support here. So Ampere is one that I use a lot to calculate my uh, energy needs. However, it's very complicated. Like, I don't fully understand it. I, I stumble my way through it a lot. But having that information I can look up at any point and understand, great. Same with Scantech. Scantech is a very complicated mod that has a lot of features and requirements and stuff. And uh, the maps itself has a lot of information that you not fully understandable at first glance so having something like that would be useful I came and loaded up the Janus project save file to just take a look uh, at all the other mods available because the the save file that I was originally showing you on this I only added a few of the mods that I typically add but here is shows you that when you have more mods here available you have more options this mod, the Delta V map, right? So this is a mod that I've added in every single one of my playthroughs ever since we, I started this channel. Every single one has had this mod, but I've never been able to find it. 
I've never been able to find the window to bring it up and click it. And it was only in this video right here that I stumbled across this map. And I'm like, <laughs> that's where it is. That's where the resource I had to bring it up on my phone. I had pictures saved in my gallery. I had to Google it. Anytime I wanted the Delta V map, I had to go elsewhere to look it up. But with this, I can actually just open it up in-game, do my calculations, and just keep going. So... It's really useful to check this out, especially if you're with mod, if you're playing with mods, because there might be some information here that you wouldn't know. I'll talk straight through it, but this is uh, some information about the feline rover utility that will inspire me for future missions. Um, one last thing, they got the the DLC. So this is the Breaking Ground uh, DLC. It shows you how to set up the surface science and about surface features and things like that. Very cool. Uh, the making history, uh, primarily in the case PD is dealing with the mission creator, and I've never created a mission, so I'm not really sure what I'm looking at here or wh what to tell you about it, but if you have the making history DLC and you want to check that out, that's, uh, that's how you find the information to do so. So, yeah, that is kind of a wrap-up of the KSpedia. I just wanted to just do a brief overview because I looked up some information about this and I hardly see anyone talking about it. You know, 10 years ago when the, the game first came out or when it first, you know, was added to the game, people mentioned it, but never, not since then, and I feel like many people might have missed out on it. So I wanted to share it with you. But anyways, that is where I'm going to leave today's episode. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you're looking forward for more KSP. If you did, think about subscribing. Drop me a like, let me know your thoughts, and I will see you on the next one. Take care.